what is happening with who is these days now that GDPR is in force. And uh, my outline is basically to give you a quick history of who is. I have 10 minutes, so it'll, it'll be necessarily brief. The impact of GDPR, again brief. The response to the temporary specification. How you can participate and why you should. And then a, a couple of the issues. There's a number of issues, so I can only highlight a couple of the ones that mean a lot to us in the non-commercial stakeholders group. And I should warn you right now that uh, uh, Marita is from ALAC, and ALAC and Phil Glenn here uh, have taken a totally different approach to the uh, problem that we are looking at than in non-commercial stakeholder groups. So in the EPDP, we have been uh, basically arguing at cross purposes. So you will probably see some big differences there. Um, our next slide. Uh, my next slide is entitled, Who is the Long Struggle, in which I just list uh, the key uh, fights that we've had over who is. When ICANN was created in 1998, uh, even before that, in the, um, in the uh, white paper, in the green paper that the Commerce Department released, who is was a requirement. Uh, and by who is, I mean the open publication of the name, address, and uh, phone number of domain name registrants. Despite the fact that that information was protected under existing data protection law, and since we're in Canada, it was protected under Canadian data protection law that came into force in uh, 2000. So, um, Actually, it passed Parliament in, in 2000. It came into force fully in 2004, but certainly for the federally regulated sector in 2001. Um, uh, so, the non-commercial stakeholder group, which at that point was called uh, NCUC, um, has been fighting to bring data protection commissioners to ICANN since then. So, the first two is uh, committee was in 2000. The first task force was in 2001 to 2003. The second from 2003 to 2004. The combined task force from 2004 to 2005. The Who is Review Team from 2010 to uh, 2012. And that uh, was the more of a review of how um, the various parties had complied with the requirements of Who is rather than looking at the policy issues themselves. Uh, the experts working group, which was the uh, initiative that actually brought me into uh, ICANN as a privacy expert, uh, was 2013 to 2014. The registration data services, who were tasked to follow up on the EWG and come up with a policy, was 2015 to 2018, when it went into limbo and the GNSO Council only recently killed it off at the last council meeting. Uh, that was a failure. And uh, the transition to stick registries happened from 2011 to 2013, uh, which involved gathering uh, what they call stick data at the registry level among the larger registries that have been uh, grandfathered to be thin registries. Uh, moving on to the next slide, because that's not the end of it, folks. Uh, the only thing that could remotely be called a policy in terms of the treatment of personal information is the who is conflicts with law policy that was drafted after the 2006 uh, study group had uh, finally managed to persuade ICANN and the GNSO that um, data protection law existed and that it had to be um, observed uh, and implemented. So that there was a um, a study group set up an IAG to look at who is conflicts with law implementation, 2015 to 2016. I sat on that. Uh, still has my vote for the looniest uh, group I've ever participated in, because the, it simply put, the uh, who is conflicts with law policy is not implementable under data protection law, and that is the law that you're attempting to um, uh, abide with. So then there was the Privacy Proxy Services Accreditation, PDP, that started in 2014. 
was very heated but ended successfully in 2015 and, and there has been an IAG, that's an implementation advisory group implementing that ever since. It's in limbo right now. Uh, then there is the RDS2 review team on which I have the pleasure of sitting, running from 2016 to 2019. Again, looking at the recommendations of the last review team, uh, in my view, somewhat irrelevant and a waste of money at the current time because if we are going to comply with GDPR, this will be all irrelevant. The interim specification came through in May 2018. Now, here's where I'm going to start to give a little bit of color commentary. Um, basically, we stumbled along attempting to come up with a policy after the expert working group came up with a full report on uh, what at least the people who wanted access to data wanted. And uh, after the failure of the RDS-2 TDP, or the rds TDP, I should call it, um, to reach a conclusion, and with the, the deadline for GDPR looming, namely May 25th of 2018, the registrars went ahead and negotiated with ICANN organization, not the multi-stakeholder model, um, an interim specification that allowed them to comply with the GDPR and get out of their obligations under the 2013 Registrar's Accreditation Agreement, which insists that they will lose their accreditation if they don't collect, use, and disclose publicly uh, the personal information of domain name registrants. So that spec came into being, uh, actually prompted me to... Um, ceremoniously resigned from the RDS group because it became rather clear why we had been ragging the puck, as we Canadians say, for the past, I don't know, at least six months, more like a year, we weren't getting anywhere. Well, of course, it's much easier to come up with an interim specification than it is to reach consensus agreement. So that preempted any policy work. The EDP, ED, the Expedited policy development um, procedure was launched in August of 2018 after quite a little, a little bit of ruminating on the part of the GNSO Council, on which I sat at the time, uh, in order to evaluate that temporary specification and see whether it should persist after May the 18th when it expires or if it should be modified. And a limited participation group was struck that, that has been working on this particular problem since um, since August. And I must say, I've been sitting on it. And uh, the non-commercial stakeholder group put together what we would call a crack team. We have, for instance, uh, Milton Mueller, who, God bless him, has been on most of that long list of who his struggles that I listed off a minute ago. We have the 2013 Registrar's Accreditation Agreement is what was replaced by the temporary specification. So it's, uh, it's important to go and have a look at what's in there. That is what uh, many parties want to return to, and that's where the WHOIS data delivery requirements are stipulated. Um, including the data collection and data retention requirements for law enforcement purposes and the registrant data that is escrowed in the U.S. for recovery and legal issues and the data that must be available for bulk processing by third-party service providers. Now, anybody who knows anything about the GDPR knows that providing data for free to bulk uh, data processors for resale is not necessarily consistent with the law and you'd have a hard time arguing that it is. <coughs> um, so one of the key factors in our analysis, um, and, and sadly we, we don't have answers to this, uh, in our view in the non-commercial stakeholder group, we have gone about this process the wrong way about, just as every um, who is process that I've looked at has started at the wrong end. They start with third-party access uh, labeled use cases. Why do people need this data? And then you have a list of 23 or 40, depending on where you start and how far you go, different uses that people have for the data. It's how the EWG started. It's how the RDS PDP started. And it basically has been, despite our best efforts, how this started. 
I would recommend anybody that wants to understand how you do a privacy analysis to read the Eco Playbook that is up on the ICANN website that was done by, well, led by uh, Thomas Rickert um, uh, for the Eco Group, and they've done a really good legal analysis. I wish it had been done before I uh, turned my thesis in because it would have helped a lot. Uh, because you have to map the data, and ICANN has never mapped the data flow. Uh, you have to decide primarily what is the first question. The first question is who's the data controller? ICANN has yet to decide on whether it is the co-controller, the co-controller, uh, a, a um, joint controller, co-controller is not actually an official word, uh, the joint controller, or nothing, which is what the position that it had taken in the past. That's very critical. Uh, to a data protection analysis. And then the next one is one minute or <laughs> one minute. How many data for not processing activities are involved and who directs them? Um, so you would have to map all those data processing activities, which the Eco Playbook does, but which we haven't done on the ECDC, and determine how to handle them. Now, this is complicated by the fact that some are in the RAA in the Registrar's Security Integration Agreement, none are in any sort of comprehensive policy, and others just show up elsewhere, like such as in the SIC, who is policy. So this makes it difficult to pull it together. How would one pull it together if one wanted to do a proper job of this? One would do a, uh, a DPIA. In Canada, we call it a PIA, the Privacy Impact Assessment where you basically lay all this stuff out on the table, figure out what parts belong to which, which are core and which are ancillary or nice to have, and which belong under the policy development process. But we haven't done that either, uh, partly because of the language in the GDPR that says you only have to do a DPIA when you're dealing with sensitive data, and I can says, well, this isn't sensitive. No, but we need a blessed DPIA to sort out the mess that we've developed over 20 years. That would be my view, of course. So um, I think I'm just about out of time. I've talked a little bit about the importance of third-party access. Over my dead body, they put third-party access into the charter for this group. I said it was the camel's nose under the tent, and it indeed has been. The entire camel's been in the tent for every one of our 30-some meetings, because all we've talked about is third-party access, not the fundamental purpose, how it fits with uh, ICANN's remit and uh, all the rest of it. I include in here a slide on what the DP, uh, the European Union data protection uh, authorities have said over the years. Um, we are about to give ICANN a request for documents because we sent them a letter which they didn't appreciate saying, please tell us what you have found out from the data protection authorities that you have been visiting for the past two years and we don't have anything of substance, including the questions that were asked. Now, uh, that just about wraps it up, but uh, if I may speak in one more critical thing, um, we had a face-to-face -face meeting of the uh, EPDP in Los Angeles. Hmm. How long ago was it? A month? Six weeks? It was before the last meeting, just before the last meeting. And uh, Euron uh, came and visited us and uh, ruminated about how maybe ICANN might want to be the sole controller. Now, and in charge of the contract with the individual. This would be a complete overturning of the way that ICANN has managed the domain name system over the years. Um, this is certainly something that the intellectual property uh, association appreciates as a concept because basically if um, if ICANN is the sole controller and the uh, registrars and registries are only processors and the contract and they're sort of they would be administering the contract for ICANN so they would just be sort of you know like a service provider as opposed to these people being their customers then in that case they would have a good argument to escape the liability. I don't think they would escape the liability because much of the liability hangs on data breach and there, you don't get rid of that as a process under the law. However, this concept uh, 
was actually the trigger for us to um, launch our rude letter to them saying, you're breaking the law, would you kind of tell us what you heard from the data protection authorities? So um, there will be more correspondence on that vein now that the report is out. But um, why should people care and why should they respond to this? Well, if there's fundamental change like that being talked about, then people should focus. Because that is a total uh, sort of flip of how a ICANN's role in the ecosystem in terms of domain name. So um, with that, I'll be quiet. Okay, thank People you. Um, I'm going to hold questions on that desk if you don't mind because we're running. Go for it.